What up internet, this is Chris coming at you from sunny South Florida. You're about to watch one of my math videos, so I just want to let you know that the technology I use in this video can also be used in a live online web meeting. What does that mean? That means whatever is on my screen you can also see on your screen. That means that we can talk to each other live at the same time. That means that while I do an example for you, you can ask me questions if you don't understand anything. This is just like having a one-on-one -on -one tutor, except even more effective because everything is being recorded. So later on in the week, if you forget anything that we covered, you can go back, watch the video, and refresh your memory. I deliver the material in a way that's very easy to understand, even if you hate math. So if you would like to schedule a me meeting, please email me at chris at mathmeeting.com. Once again, chris at mathmeeting.com. I hope you enjoy this video, and take care. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you taking the derivative of a function using the chain rule. Instead of explaining the chain rule to you with a complicated formula, I'm just going to explain everything just using simple examples. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is why is the chain rule so useful? The reason why the chain rule is so useful, as you can see with the function I wrote for you, 4x squared plus 5 all raised to the 10th power, if we had to expand that function and then take the derivative, that would take an extremely long time. And the chain rule allows us to take the derivative without expanding, so it makes it, the process a lot quicker and a lot easier. So as you can see, I wrote down the steps for you um, on the right-hand side. And step number one is look for the parentheses. As you can see, the 4x squared plus 5 have the parentheses around it. As soon as you see parentheses, that's a dead giveaway that you need to use the chain rule. So before I move on to step number two, I'm just going to copy and paste to save a little bit of time. Step number two, take the exponent and bring it to the front. Really self-explanatory. I'm just going to take the exponent and bring it right to the front. We're already done. Step number three, subtract the exponent by one. So instead of writing the exponent as a 10 in the derivative, now we're going to write it as a 9. And finally, the last step is multiply by the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. So as you can see, we have a 4x squared plus 5. The derivative of 4x squared is just 8x plus the derivative of 5, which is just 0, so we're going to leave it as 8x. And now we have taken the derivative using the chain rule. We're not completely finished yet because your answer always needs to be as simplified as possible. So as you can see, we still have some algebra to do. The 10 can be multiplied by the 8x. So 10 multiplied by 8x equals 80x. And the parentheses say the same. Multiply by 4x squared plus 5 all raised to the ninth power. Now I've completely taken a derivative of a function using the chain rule. In the following examples, the algebra is going to get a little more difficult, but the process and the steps that you see on the right-hand side of the, of the screen always stay the same for every single problem. So let's move on to another example. Let's get started with our second example. Here we have the function the square root of 3x cubed plus 10x. Now, in the previous example, I told you the first step is look for parentheses, and that's our dead giveaway that we need to use the chain rule. So as you can see, we don't see any parentheses in this function, so how do we know that we have to use the chain rule? Um, one simple algebra rule is that a square root can be written the same way as using a positive one-half exponent. So instead of writing the square root of 3x cubed plus 10x, I'm just going to create parentheses, 3x cubed plus 10x, all raised to the one-half power. And that is exactly the same as a square root function. So let's move on to step two.
bring the exponent to the front. Really self-explanatory. Copy and paste just to save some time. Just bring the exponent and drag it to the front. We're done with step number two. Step number three, subtract the exponent by one. A positive one-half exponent minus one is a negative one-half. Moving on to step number four, multiply by the derivative of what's inside. The, der the derivative of 3x cubed is 9x squared plus the derivative of 10x, which is just a positive 10. And we've completed all our steps. This is not our final answer because the answer is not simplified as much as possible because it is very improper to leave a negative exponent in your final answer. So if you remember from algebra, a negative exponent in your numerator is a positive exponent in the denominator. So instead of writing a negative exponent on top, I'm going to write a positive exponent on the bottom. So I'm going to write 3x cubed plus 10x on the bottom with the positive 1 half exponent. The 9x squared plus 10 stays on the top. all multiplied by one half. Now since the original function was written with a square root, your final answer should have a square root as well. So our final answer is going to look something like this. Instead of writing the 3x cubed plus 10x to the one half power, I'm going to write the square root of 3x cubed plus 10x. And like I said before, that does not change one bit. It's still exactly the same. And that is our derivative of the function using the chain rule. Now let's move on to our final example. Let's get started with our final example. Here we have the function 2 over 5x squared plus 3x. Once again, our first step is to look for parentheses. And as you can see in this function, we don't see parentheses, so how do we know that we need to use the chain rule? Um, once again, just using simple algebra steps, we can put parentheses around the denominator and put a 1, and we haven't changed anything. And once again, using algebra steps, instead of writing a positive exponent in the denominator, you can write a negative exponent in the numerator. So I'm going to rewrite this function. 2 multiply by 5x squared plus 3x. Since it's positive in the denominator, now it's negative in the numerator. So this could be a negative 1. On to step 2. I'm going to copy and paste. So now you see our parentheses. That's our dead giveaway. We need to use this chain rule. Step number two, bring our exponent to the front. Really self-explanatory, really easy. And I'm going to put a little dot in between the 1 and the 2 just to show that they're being multiplied by each other. Step number 3, subtract the exponent by 1. So we have a negative 1 exponent minus 1 turns into a negative 2. Step number four, multiply by the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of 5x squared is 10x 
plus the derivative of 3x, which is just a positive 3. Now we have taken the derivative using the chain rule, but once again, our final answer needs to be as simplified as possible. We can never have a negative exponent in our final answer, so instead of writing a negative in the numerator, I'm going to write a positive in the denominator. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. The 10x plus 3 stays the same. And like I said before, a negative in the numerator is a positive in the denominator. So the 5x squared plus 3x will have a positive 2 now. That is our final example. Now we have taken the derivative using the chain rule. I hope this made you understand everything a little bit better.